I want to talk to you about community. I want to talk to you about what it looks like and how you and your youth group can engage into it. Uh, just before we dive into this idea of community, I want you to look at these memorabilia items, th these, these symbols. You probably recognize what they are and what they stand for, even if you don't like them. Why? Because we know these things by the symbol that they are displayed by. Let me ask you a question. If we can recognize countries and uh, sports figures and uh, sports teams and, and, and comic book characters and all these different things by their symbol. What about us as Christians? Do you think that we as Christians ought to have a unifying mark that the world can recognize us by? I'm sure you obviously know the answer is yes. Jesus gave us as his followers a symbol that the world could know us by. He says in John chapter 13 verses 34 and 35, it says this, it says, a new commandment I give to you, that you would love one another just as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Jesus said that the world should take notice of us because of the love that we have. In fact, on the night that he was betrayed, before he went and was crucified, he prayed that we would be bound together in unity. In fact, there's an, there's an ancient poetic phrase, heart bound. Jesus prayed that we would be heart bound in our unity and that that heart binding of love for each other and for the world would be a compelling message of the gospel. That they would say that there's something different about us and how we react and interact with one another and what happens around us. So let's dive into this idea because I believe as we see this, we will see this heartbeat for community that Jesus longs for us to have. We look at the idea of why should we love? Well, Jesus here in, in John chapter 13, again, he says, a new command I give to you. The first thing we need to understand is that this is not just advice. This is not just a good idea. No, Jesus actually says, hey, a new commandment I give to you. Now, you need to understand, this wasn't anything brand new. The people had heard things like this before, but this was a fresh spin. You see, the way that Jesus lived and the way that Jesus reacted and interacted with people, his style of love was totally different than a lot of the religious leaders and religious people of that day. And so when Jesus looked at his disciples, he said, listen, a new commandment I give to you. I'm telling you to love in a fresh new way. But what does that look like? Well, first of all, he says, love. That ought to be the first thing that people notice about us. Hey, followers of Christ, Christians, brothers and sisters, let me ask you a question. Why is it that sometimes the world that doesn't know God shows love better than we who say we know God? That, that is a sad thing. In fact, I really believe, and we'll continue to talk about this, but I really believe that if we loved one another the way that God has called us to, the way that Jesus has called us to in his world, the world would be banging down our doors because they would say, you react and interact differently with people than we do in the world. He says, love. Number, number two, he says, love one another. Not just our friends, not just our family, not just the people that, that are nice to us or will do something nice for us. He says, love everybody. Now, I do believe right here he was talking to his disciples and, and first and foremost, followers of Christ, we ought to have a special love for other followers of Jesus Christ. Again, how sad is it that the outside world is not interested in coming to our churches because sometimes they see the way that we love one another in the church and they go, I'm not interested in that. And I, People out here treat me better than you guys treat each other in there. And you say you're brothers and sisters. But that's why Jesus was putting a fresh spin when he said to love one another, check this out, as I have loved you. And that's the difference maker. You see, the way that Jesus loved us and loves us, the way that Jesus loved everybody that he came into contact with is so different many times than the way that we love one another. He made it clear that there is to be a special love among the believers. It's a fascinating fact that Jesus didn't just live up to the standard. No, no, no. He redefined the standard of his love. What is that? Well, it's found in the gospel. He went to the cross for people that were his enemies. Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that what? In that while we were still sinners, when we were enemies of God, Jesus died for you and for me. 
Jesus' love gave his all for us. Charles Spurgeon, a great preacher, said it this way. He says, we are to love our neighbor as ourselves, but we are to love our fellow Christians as Christ loved us, and that is far more than we love ourselves. Can I ask you a question? Does the way that you love the world, does the way that you love unbelievers, not, not the world, but the way that you love unbelievers, the way that you love fellow Christians, does the outside world that doesn't know Christ, do they take notice of it? And are they drawn to it? If not, I think we need to restart our heart. If not, I think we need a little checkup from the neck up and maybe change the way that we view things and change the way that we're doing, we're doing things. And so our heart-bound love for one another ought to be a mirrored reflection of the way that Jesus loves all of us and loves the world. Number two, he says not only a new commandment, but a new recognition. You says, see, he says this, by this, all will know that you're my disciples. The, the thing that ought to define us in the world is the way that we love one another and the way that we have love for one another. These words, Jesus was making it clear that the characteristic for loving one another is our defining mark. By this, all will know that you are my disciples. Tertullian, a, a great ancient uh, a man in, in the early church, he, he said that in, that days, in the days of the early church, the pagans would say, see how they love one another. They didn't, they didn't believe in Christ. A lot of them weren't, weren't even to look to accept Christ, but they couldn't help but to mark a difference in the Christians and their love for one another. And check this out. That was in the midst of a persecution that was in the midst of a time where people were dying for their faith and they still loved each other. They still stood up and defended and honored one another more so than themselves. So much so that the pagan world, the outside unbelieving world took notice of their love. See how they love one another. Their heart bound believers were a mirrored reflection of Christ's heart. So we talked about why we should love because it gives us a new commandment and a new recognition. But what does that love look like? Well, in the very beginning of the early church found in Acts chapter two, we see a massive heartbeat of the church. It says this, Acts chapter two, starting in, in verse 41 to 47. Then those who gladly received his word, speaking about Peter, were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done, done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together, and they had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them among all, as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. What an incredible example those early believers were of the heartbound, mirrored reflection of Christ's love that he's given to us, that they were displaying to the world. What we see here is we see the actions of the entire church. Notice it says, it says that now all who believed were together and had all things in common. In pursuing together, they couldn't help but to be a family. See, that's, I think, what, what so many times is it divides us is we, we come together and maybe we worship, but our outside lives that we spend more time in, we're divided and we're headed in other directions. But here we see the early church, they were united. They were even willing to share, to sell their things, to give. Oh, you need this? Man, I got one of those. I, I have an extra one. Or maybe even this is my only one, but you need it, I'll give it to you. I don't know about you, but I first think, well, are you going to treat it the way I want you to treat it? Are, are, are you going to break it? And if you break it, are you going to replace it? Not only are you going to replace it, but are you going to buy me a better version? That's not love. That's not love. That's not the heartbeat of Christ. That's not the heartbeat of the early church and the early, early believers that they showed that action of mirrored reflection. No, listen, we have got to be willing to love one another. Not only do we see the entire, the actions of the entire church, but we see the actions of the individual members. You see, yeah, it was the heartbeat of the church, but it still took every single person being willing. Now, maybe you're sitting there and you hear something like that and you think something like I sometimes sinfully think, well, they're not doing it and they're not doing it and they're not doing it. So why should I have to do it? Can I ask you a question? 
So many of us long to be leaders for Christ. So instead of saying, well, they're not, they're not, they're not, why should I? We should say, they might not be, but I will. You see, I think that that's the distinctive uh, reflection of a leader. I think that's what, what God calls all of us to do. Not to say, but they're not, no, 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 no. What about I? What about you and me saying, it doesn't matter what everybody else does, I'm going to stand up. In fact, most times that somebody in the word of God makes a massive difference for Christ in the world, it's because it was one person being willing to say, it doesn't matter if anybody else does this, I know the right thing I ought to do and I'm gonna do it. I know the call of Jesus' love to the world that he's called me to give and I'm gonna show it. Jesus said in Acts 20, 35, it is more blessed to give than receive. He's quoted. And then over in Matthew 16, 25, and for whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. You see, we've got to say, what are those things that I need to be willing to do to, to share with one another as has need? I need to be a heartbound believer mirroring Christ's heart. So let's bring this to a close. Is there somebody in your group that is known for this? Or how about your group? Is your entire group known for this? Is your youth group making marks and having comments being said about them in your school because you love people in a different way? Let me ask you a question. Do you love each other in your group that way? How about you? Who is somebody this week that you could say, you know what, regardless of how they act, I need to show them Christ's love. I need to mirror Christ's love for me, even at my worst, for them, regardless of how they act. Guys, we need to be a part of community and we need to be a, a gospel outreach out to the world. How do we do that? We follow the new commandment. We love as Christ loved. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.